So, I, there, when I when I was in detox, uh, just you know, not not too long ago, um, they had a lot of guys there, man, and uh, they're good guys, you know, really good guys. They had some guys with some really big hearts, and uh, it was really sad, you know, because not most of them didn't have any length of sobriety more than like three months. You know, I'm not putting down them or judging them because I've been like that too. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it was really sad because I, I, a couple of them I got really close with, with just the seven or eight days I was there. Um, you know, I had it broke my heart because, you know, I, I had started to have love for them and, and they would tell me all these things and they're really lost. You know, they didn't, they didn't know all these things about God. You know, they didn't know God. Um, you know, I tried to help when I was there and, and you know, it's just, uh, and I got the numbers and stuff and, and when they get out, you know, they're, they actually live around this area, but, uh, you know, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to help them and, and, uh, speak as much life into their situation as I can, you know, and, um, you know, but it, it, it it's actually, it's, it says in the word, I think it's, um, let me look at it. It says, uh, Hosea 4, 6, but it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, so there's that word knowledge, you know, and, and that's the word of God, you know. Um, so we have to have knowledge of his word, you know, uh, or we'll, we'll be defeated. You know, we won't, we won't be able to tell. We need to stay in tune with the, with the spirit of God, you know, because he's the one, you know, who, who he gives us this revelation and he gives us this discernment to to be able to know when the enemy is attacking us or not, you know. Um, cause, you know, when I'm when I'm sober and when I'm following God, it's real easy for me. I'm I'm really in tune, you know, and I know, I know, I know when the devil's coming against my mind. You know what I'm saying? I know it. You know, I can feel it. I can I, it's just hard to explain, you know, but I I can I'm aware. You know, I'm very much aware of him, very much alive. Um, and it feels good, you know, because when I, in, in my addiction, it's like it's numb. Just everything's numb. Everything's just, it's just, it's like I told you life. Way. It's like you're, it's like, I, it's like a, I'm a shell of a person, you know, with no life, you know, and it was just all doom and gloom. And, and I was, the other day I looked in the sky and it was just, and I heard the birds chirping, you know, and I looked at the sky and it was beautiful. And, you know, I just, in that moment, you know, I felt blessed and, and I felt alive, you know, and and it felt good. You know, I, I, I love being sober. You got your retarded personality back. Right. He's so <laughs> aggravating, oh my God. I love being sober, <laughs> you know, um, and I forget how much I like being sober whenever I relapse. Um, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's crazy how you can have just one moment of vulnerability. And if you make a, a bad decision, how they can change you so quickly, you know, um, because I, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I despise drugs. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't like them. You know what I'm saying? I don't, don't like them at all. Uh, especially what I've seen, what it's done to myself and, there, and a lot of people's life, you know, that I love, um, you know, but it, it gives me a determination, you know what I'm saying? It, it makes me want to fight harder. It makes me, you know, I think about other people, you know what I'm saying? What helped me stay sober in two years, you know, whenever I get, and and now too, you know, I still use this, but whenever I do think about crashing out, you know what I'm saying? I, I'll think about the people that I affect, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, just people pop in mind, like, well, if I relapse, you know, what does it show this person? You know what I'm saying? Would it make that person relapse? You know, um, and that's kept me sober before. You know, um, but you know, I, I want to help people, and I, I'm just I'm not in it for myself. Um, you know, and I, I want to be a good examples. You know, I want to be a good example to my wife, my children, um, and everybody who's around me. Um, you know, because I'm held accountable for that. You know, when I, whenever I go and meet my maker. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna ask me those things. He's gonna he's gonna hold me accountable, and uh, I want to be able to 
you know, to do the right thing. And, um, you know, I don't want my children to suffer, and I don't want, you know, this disease and that, or spiritual malady, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't want to see people suffer, you know, and um, addiction has a lot of people suffering right now. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's deceiving a lot of people, you know, and, and that's one of the devil's best uh, lies <clears throat> is uh, he convinces people that it's not real. And uh, if you think it's not real, you're fooling yourself because um, he's definitely real. And, you know, the devil actually knows <laughs> He don't know everything about you. You know what I'm saying? Like, he don't, I, don't, I don't think he knows all that you are in Christ, but he does know who you are in Christ. You know what I'm saying? That's why he, he, he might not know every detail, but that's why he fights so hard, because he even believes God's plan for your life. You see what I'm saying? And that's why he's going to fight so hard, because he don't want you to get to, he don't want you to know who you are in Christ. Because once you know, and once you make up your mind, that's when you are very powerful. You know what I'm saying? He don't want you to know that. That's why he'll beat you down so much. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, so that, that's that's what was on my heart. And that's another thing I want I want to say too. Um, there was a time. Um, so I, you know, I, I grew up in church. You know, I always knew Jesus. Um, and I was 25 years old when this happened. But I was in a, I was actually in a, a, a discipleship program. And it's crazy. It's the fortieth day I was there. It's actually the, uh, yeah, it was the fortieth day. It was like uh, three, two, three in the morning. I woke up, and um, I got this just strong desire to read the Word of God. <clears throat> so I started reading the Bible, and as I was reading, I stopped and I started to pray, and all of a sudden, uh, God sh had showed me this vision. And it was in a, it was just in, in, in just moments, you know, but I saw it so clearly and I felt it. I actually felt this, but, um, I pictured Jesus on the cross and I felt the love and compassion that he had for me. And it was so overwhelming that I cried. I cried for like three hours until they turned the lights on at six o'clock. And then I went to, uh, the prayer room, you know, <clears throat> and, um, you know, all that come in my mouth was, thank you, God, I love you, God, you know, but it was so crazy because I had my whole life, you know, I knew Jesus, but that was the first time that I really, truly felt that Jesus, I knew he loved me, but that's the first time I felt his love and his compassion, and it was so overwhelming, and it was so beautiful, and I wish other people could experience that, you know, I wish I could experience it again, I mean, I I can relive really it by thinking it, but it was just so beautiful. It was such a good moment. And it was so crazy. Um, and there's some other things that happened too, but we'll, you know, I'll share that another day. But, um, you know, I just, I, I hope that, you know, this, this video does something for you. Um, I hope it blesses you. Um, and, uh, you got anything? Okay, well, uh. I love your heart. Oh. Uh, it's still playing. Okay. I love your heart too, though. Um, but we'll um, we'll close this thing out with a prayer. Okay. And um, if you want to, do you want to? No, you can pray. Okay. Those faces you're making ah. kill me. Ah. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you, Lord. Thank you for just uh, putting what you did on our hearts, Lord. Thank you for just working on us and just continuing to be patient with us, Father God. I know that we fall short, Father, but you're always here and you're always just willing to take us. Back in, Lord, um, I just want to pray for anybody watching this, Father. Um, I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, Father God. No weapon for me and some shall prosper, Lord. And uh, just continue to use us, Father. And I ask that you protect our children, our family, Father. Anybody who's out there struggling, Lord, just touch their hearts. Just give them a moment of clarity, Father, and pull them back into you. Pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.